This is Tom Mnaki and today I'm going over ashwagandha. It's tough to pronounce, but it's more popular than ever. The searches are skyrocketing on Google. The benefits, the side effects for men, for women, this studies, is it worth it? We're starting now. Ashwagandha, I've never heard of this thing in the past, but over the past year, it's skyrocketing. Everybody's talking about it. I did a deep dive into the research, into the studies. It is scientifically known as Withanthia somnifera, a prominent herb in the traditional system of medicine in India. This herb is referred as the Indian ginseng due to its rejuvenating properties and has a very rich history on the eastern side of the world. It's been used for over 3,000 years to relieve stress, increase energy levels, and some male and female benefits. The name refers to the strong horse-like odor of the root that it comes from. It is classified as an adaptogen, meaning it can manage your body's stress levels, relax you, and again, do some other stuff. Essentially, the root of a plant is crushed up and a powder is created. There's a ton of research and studies on the potential for inflammation, brain function, blood sugar, and even cancers at this point. It is grown and cultivated in Nepal, China, Yemen, and parts of the United States now. It's especially popular now for its male benefits, especially for reproductive health. So first, let's start with the six benefits for the men, and we'll go over the women too, and then the overall deep dive studies to see if this is working, if it's actually worth taking. There are six benefits for men. Number one is testosterone levels and fertility. A study published in the journal Evidence-Based Complementary and Alternative Medicine Journal found that ashwagandha supplementation led to significant increases in testosterone. And I actually looked, it's a very popular selling supplement for that part right now. The study actually reported 167% increase in sperm count, 53% in semen volume, and 57% increase in sperm motility. Is it a huge level study? I wouldn't say it's a huge level study. For the average man in their 20s and 30s, testosterone is high, but gradually starts to drop off. By your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, you start to notice a decline. The average is about 1% per year. But don't worry, there are so many things you can do without having to get a testosterone or TRT injection. And what's even worse, if you look at the previous decades, testosterone has dropped for the average man today. So the men in the 1980s were significantly more testosterone fueled than they are now. It's dropping like a rock comparatively. But don't worry, there are simple changes that you can make in your life right now that can skyrocket. I'm talking like 30, 40% immediately testosterone boost. Check that video out below. The Journal of International Society of Sports Nutrition studied muscle strength and mass of ashwagandha. They found that people who take ashwagandha had significantly greater strength muscle gains especially in exercise-induced muscle damage, such as lifting weights, bench press. Improved sexual function. A study in the American Journal of Men's Health suggested that ashwagandha may improve sexual function in participants, including performance, satisfaction, and vitality. So that's for the men. We'll actually go over the large-scale studies later and go into the details. The top benefits for women are stress and anxiety. A study in the Indian Journal of Psychological Medicine studied women specifically for stress and anxiety, and people who took ashwagandha had a 44% reduction in stress scores compared to a 5% reduction in placebo groups. Improved sexual function. A study published in the Biomed Research International Journal found that female sexual dysfunction was improved by taking ashwagandha, specifically arousal, lubrication, orgasm, and it had a 77% increase in sexual function scores. I didn't deep dive into those. I'm just kind of reading what the study summarized. Thyroid function, there was another study that helped with thyroid function in women. And there was another journal article in ethnopharmacology going over menopause symptoms and found that ashwagandha can reduce hot flashes and mood swings. So these on the surface sound amazing. The one critique about ashwagandha is smaller level studies. So I like to look at the meta-analysis studies 
larger scale systematic studies that look at a lot of different articles. And these articles usually do a good job throwing out crappier articles. You know, you can still read each one individually and go through the nitty gritty, but let's just start going over the larger scale studies. So number one, stress and anxiety is probably the most popular use. A systematic review and meta-analysis in the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine in 2014 reviewed five human trials. It found that ashwagandha consistently resulted in significant reductions in stress and anxiety. They concluded that over these five human trial studies, that ashwagandha is pretty useful for stress and anxiety management. Five studies is not a ton. It's decent. The meta-analysis results are actually really good. They looked at 12 eligible papers that were randomized control trials, which are pretty high level. And they looked at 1,002 patients between the ages 25 and 48. They found 50% less anxiety and 75% less stress during the studies. And we'll go over the dosages at the end for all of these. Number two. Improvement in Physical Performance, a journal review in the Journal of International Society of Sports Nutrition in 2015 examined the effects of ashwagandha on physical performance. It concluded that ashwagandha supplements are associated with a significant gain in muscle mass and strength in men and cardiorespiratory endurance in elite athletes and individuals. Now, I would love to do an even deeper dive and kind of comb through these studies. This is just meant to be more of an overview of the studies. This meta-analysis whittled down essentially 1,000 papers to 13 eligible papers, which were randomized control trials. And that means they did one group that took ashwagandha and compared it to a placebo that did not take it. This was 615 patients that on average took it for 4 to 12 weeks, depending on the study. The results were there was significantly better grip strength, strength overall, breathing ability and fatigue, as well as slightly higher testosterone in some studies. So these almost sound too, too good to be true. So let's keep looking. And here's the more popular part of ashwagandha, the male benefits. In a randomized control trial, there was four eligible papers. They took over 600 milligrams per day, generally four to eight weeks, but usually there was eight to 12 weeks. And what happened was there was 167% more sperm 59% more volume, 57% more motility of the sperm, and overall, and probably most importantly, there was 17% more testosterone after a couple months. Specifically, the studies averaged 250 milligrams per day to about 675 milligrams per day of ashwagandha root extract. The average testosterone level increase at the end of 8 to 12 weeks was about 10 to 22 percent on average compared to the baseline but the average was 17 percent improvement that's actually pretty reasonable again check out that video below i go over some easy proven stuff you could do at home immediately that's safe and cost free cognitive and neuroprotective effects a systematic review was performed in the journal of ethnopharmacology in 2020 and it did indicate that there are potential decreases in inflammation but the meta-analysis said the studies were too low volume, not enough patients. Number four, thyroid function. A systematic review in the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine in 2019 looked at the thyroid, and they found across the majority of the studies that the thyroid was beneficial. Sleep quality. And this is interesting because I actually had a sleep supplement when I was doing my videos, and ashwagandha is really high up there for helping with sleep, like right behind the melatonins. A 2021 systematic review and meta-analysis in the Journal of Sleep Medicine focused on the sleep-promoting effects of ashwagandha. It found that ashwagandha had a significant positive effect on sleep quality and might be beneficial for people with insomnia or poor sleep quality. It actually ranked in the top five of our top 10 review countdown of sleep supplements. For the sleep study, there was five eligible papers that met randomized control trial eligibility. That means there was a placebo for half who didn't take it and half who took it. The 400 patients who took it took over 600 milligrams per day and took it for over eight weeks. The sleep quality was better. You fell asleep quicker and you were more alert when you woke up the next day. Mental health and quality of life. A systematic review in the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry in 2020 analyzed the effects of ashwagandha on mental health 
it found that it could improve the general well-being, quality of life, and this was related to the stress and anxiety decrease. So the majority of the studies looked at sleep, stress, anxiety. There are some small studies talking about getting jacked, getting built, having a better sex life, but these are smaller studies. Realistically, if there's not a large-scale randomized control trial or a large-scale study, it's difficult to say for certain. And that's where I count on you, the viewers. Since I have been asking this in the video, it has been phenomenal. But when I ask you guys to share or put your comments down below, how's ashwagandha working for you? Are you a weightlifter? Are you a female? Are you a man who has had benefits or negatives or side effects? Tell me down below. These videos are so huge and so helpful and they help so many people in the comments because these studies are just too small. And a lot of times the opinion in these videos is just more helpful than even some of these studies. The side effects, gastrointestinal issues are common like GI, gas, bloatiness, sedative effects. It's known to make you sleepy. That's why it's used as a sleep aid. Thyroid hormone interactions. If you're on thyroid hormones, be careful taking this. Pregnancy, it's not studied with pregnancy, not recommended while you're pregnant. Autoimmune diseases. And specifically, it's referring to thyroid autoimmune diseases in this case, like Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Just be careful if you have thyroid issues. There's allergic reactions. There's blood sugar and blood pressure issues, which lower it, which could be a good effect. It's actually studied to lower blood sugar. How much ashwagandha do you want to take per day? I tried taking it at nighttime in smaller doses, one time per day. I can't really tell if it was making a difference or not because I took it as part of a combo. But studies range from 250 milligrams to 500 milligrams per day. Higher doses might be used, but it's generally advisable to start with the smaller doses so you don't have any stomach issues. And you could raise it if it's not doing anything. And the tricky part is this: because this is not a medication and it is a herbal, the root extract, the powder, the capsule could be different strength, different dosage. There's no one keeping a strict eye on this except for the supplement manufacturer. The duration of use. Most studies only looked at shorter periods of time, like two months, three months, or less. There's no like one or two year studies of this, and that's kind of the problem with these studies. Here's the recommendations and the big secrets of ashwagandha. It is a herbal medication. There are some unbelievable reports and it's been used for 3000 years on the eastern side of the world with great results. If it didn't work, why would they keep using it for 3000 years? Especially if they weren't selling it as a supplement back then. But now you gotta be aware, it's a supplement. There's a lot of different people pumping it out. Start with lower doses, take it with some food, if you have thyroid issues, monitor your thyroid function. If you have autoimmune conditions like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, be careful. If you're pregnant, if you have some type of reaction the first time you take it, cut it out. But tell me your results. I think this is such a popular medication. It's selling like crazy, but there's hardly any studies. Tell me if you're finding any new studies and tell me if you want me to do a deeper dive into the studies that I talked about. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much.